in the previous video, we created a server on DigitalOcean and logged into it via SSH. So no matter where you're creating a server, whether it's locally on VirtualBox or on a Raspberry Pi or your own server, or off in the server room on the other side of the planet, there's a couple of things we need to do to get the server up and running. There's a couple of basic things that we need to do before we start installing any other software on the system. So as you've seen in the previous video, we logged in as root. Now we don't really want to be doing that. We want to create a new user. Now that you're logged into the server, and you can see down here at the start, we've got root, and that is the user we're currently logged in as. And then after the app is our host name, which was generated for us when we created the server with DigitalOcean. So now let's add a new user. So to do that, it's really simple. We just type add user as all one word, and then a space, and then the name of the user we want to create. And I'm just going to use my name, and I'm just going to create a user called Mark. I'm just going to hit enter. And I'll ask you to type a password in now for this user. And then confirm it again. Now I'll ask for some personal details, like your name. You don't need to enter these. I usually don't. So you can just hit enter to skip through them. And then it's going to say, is this information correct? And I'm just going to confirm it. Now we've created this user, we want to give them super user privileges. And this just means the user can be elevated to have extra privileges to edit and install and delete files that don't belong to them. So we're basically allowing them to have root user privileges. So to do this, we just type user mod and then a space and then a hyphen a lowercase a and a capital G and the case in here is important it needs to be a lowercase a and a capital G now what these parameters mean or sometimes referred to as flags is that we're going to add this user to a group and what group do we want to add them to so we're going to give it a space and we want to add them to the pseudo group so now we're told it what group we want to add them to obviously we need to tell it what user we want to add to the pseudo group so it's a space and then the name of the user in my case this is Mark and then we're going to hit enter. So the next thing we want to do is set up our firewall. So to do this, we can type UFW. And that stands for uncomplicated firewall, in case you're wondering. And then a space, and then we can just type app space list. And as you could probably guess, this is going to list out the applications that might need access through the firewall. And you see right now we've only got one, and that's OpenSSH which is what we're using to connect into the server. So we want to allow this application OpenSSH through our firewall. So to do that, it's UFW again, space, and then allow. And then what do we want to allow? We want to allow OpenSSH. And then we can see the rules have been updated for that. So now we just need to enable our firewall. So if we just type UFW enable, and then it's just warning you this may interrupt connections. So we're going to be okay with that. So we're going to click yes. And we can check that it's running with UFW status. And you see our firewall is active and it's allowing connections through OpenSSH. So the final thing we need to do, our new user doesn't have an SSH key. Because when DigitalOcean created the server for us, it copied across our SSH key, but gave it to the root account. So what we can do is we can copy it from the root home directory into our new user's home directory. We can do that with a program called rsync. So it's R-S-Y-N-C and then a space. And when we copy this, we want to use archive mode. And to do that, it's dash dash and then archive. And this just keeps all information of the file, like timestamps and ownerships and stuff like that the same. And because of that, the ownership is going to be with root and not our new user. So at the same time, we can just change the ownership. So to do that, it's dash dash and then CHO, so change ownership. Um, we want that equal to our user and our users group. So in my case, that's Mark, and then a colon, and then Mark. So that's gonna copy this file, but it's gonna give ownership and permissions to Mark. Okay, so what do we wanna copy? We wanna copy everything in the SSH folder from the root user over to Mark's home directory. So to do that, we can just type tilde, and this is just a shortcut to home for the current user. And again, our current user is root, as you can see here. And we do a forward slash to put us into that directory. And then we want to copy over the SSH folder. 
And you notice this is a dot here, or some people call it a period. And this just means that the folder is hidden from view. And then we want to copy this folder to home and then mark. So we're copying it to the new user's home directory. And just hit enter. And there you go, that's copied it across. So let's test this out. So let's just open a new tab in the terminal and let's SSH into our server again. And this time we're going to log in as mark and not root. So mark at and then paste your server IP in. And you see we're now logged in, but this time we're logged in as our user mark. But this time we're logged in as our user mark and not the root user. So moving forward, any other videos that you watch where we're installing software, make sure that you are as a user and not the root user. So one final thing we can do is test that we've got our sudo permissions. So we can do that by updating the system. So let's try it without sudo first. So if we do an apt, so package manager handles the installation, updating and removal of all your software on your system. So think of it as like an app store. So you can go to apt and say, I want to have this software install it for me. And then that comes down and installs on your system. But before we install anything, we want to get an updated list of the software that's available to us. And we don't get that from a store. It's something that we call repositories or repo for short. But let's get that updated list so we can do apt and then type update. As you can see here, we get some errors saying permission denied. And that's because we don't have the correct privileges to do that. So let's run this command again, but with sudo in front of it. And a quick tip here, you can press the up and down keys to browse through your history of commands. So if we just press the up key, we can see here we've got apt update. Now you can use the keyboard arrows to scroll along to the start, which is fine. This command's quite small. But imagine if this command was long. So to jump to the start of the line, you can either press the home key or you can press control A and it'll jump to the start of the command for you. So let's put sudo in front of this and then hit enter. And now it'll ask you to confirm your password for your user. And this is the password you inputted when you created the user. So type your password in and hit enter. So as you can see, this has gone out to the repositories and said, give me the latest list of your software. So I've got an updated list locally. So now our system knows what all the latest software is in those repositories. And as I said before, you can think of them as a primitive app store. So now we know our sudo is working. So this user can now run commands that need elevated privileges. Now that we've got our list of all the latest software, we can tell apt, if our software on our current system is out of date, then please update it. So to do that, it's a sudo, a space, apt, and then this time, instead of update, we say upgrade. And then we just hit enter. And then this will show us the packages that are going to be upgraded. And it just wants us to confirm that, yes, we want to upgrade these packages. So we just type Y and then hit enter. Now you might get this message on DigitalOcean. So it's basically saying part of the system has been modified and the upgrade will overwrite it. Now this is a bit of code that manages the boot of the system and DigitalOcean have modified this so it's easier for them to manage. So what we're going to do is just keep the local version currently installed. And there we go. That could take a few minutes depending on how out of date your system is. Well, now we have an Ubuntu system that's fully up to date with a firewall enabled and a user created ready to go. So from this point forward, you can move on and install any software you like. And I've got multiple videos on the channel with more coming out all the time, showing you different software that you can install and run on your system.